By the end of this video, you'll find out why I use Home Assistant as my home automation platform of choice. Hey guys, it's Gio from Smart Home Makers. In this video, I'm gonna give you eight valid reasons why you might consider Home Assistant yourself. So first of all, let's get the basics out of the way. A home automation platform is a piece of software that combines IoT devices from different vendors and they can interact together with automations and routines. For example, you can have a motion sensor from one vendor turning on a light from a different vendor. That gives you flexibility to mix and match the hardware as you seem fit. The first reason is integrations. Home Assistant has 1,725 integrations available at the time of the recording of this video. That gives you a lot of options in terms of the hardware and the platforms that you can use and you can integrate. And a lot of the famous platforms are available, for example, Nest, Sonos, Philips Hue, LifeX, Tuya, and the list goes on. Protocols that you can use are MQTT and also a lot of other REST APIs, command line protocols are also available. To explore the integrations, you can go to Home Assistant website and you actually search them by device type and device category so you can go find out what actually works. One thing to consider that if things are not available officially as an integration, you can always turn to the community and the community, they have custom built components called custom components that you can actually find, for example, on forums, but also on the Home Assistant community store, also called Hacks. Most of these automations nowadays are auto discovery and are very, very easy to discover with minimal knowledge of coding. Some of them require a little bit more effort, but go and check out the integration page before you actually purchase a new hardware. The second reason is customizable UI dashboards. So with other home automation platforms, you're very constrained of what and how you can show the status of your smart home. But with Home Assistant, you can create a lot of pages in the dashboard that they call Lovelace. Lovelace has around 2930 cards that you can actually use and each card has a different specification. For example, you can have an alarm panel card, a glance card, a picture element card, and each one of these will fit a different use case and will showcase the status of your device. So for example, if you have a motion sensor, it could be clear uh, or detected, a light could be on and off, the color of the bulb, the brightness percentage, and so on and so forth. So you can go and explore all of these before to pick the one you can actually and you want to use. Other advantage of dashboards is that you can have different users in the home assistant can see different dashboards. So you can have a more power user uh, for yourselves. And then for other family members, you can have a, an easier and simpler version of the dashboard. This dashboard is also compatible on the mobile app, which I'll talk about later on in the video. Home assistant is quite flexible in terms of the hardware that you use to actually run it on. You can go from using an existing laptop and repurpose it, having a NAS with a um, virtual machine running. You can have it running in Docker or you can have it on a micro computer called a Raspberry Pi. So you really decide yourself. Very recently, they just released Home System Blue, which is their own hardware and software pre-installed on it. Like for example, other vendors do. This means that you can potentially start using Home Assistant without paying anything and you just need to bring the hardware and you can scale up your home assistant instance as time grows and time goes by and actually your smart home grows. The fourth reason is local control of your devices. So this is actually normally number one in a lot of these videos. Why? Because it's so important to keep your devices connected locally. I'll give you two reasons why. Security, first of all, if you have your devices communicating out to the cloud, that could be a problem in terms of um, security of your camera or all of your other devices. If one of your IoT devices get hacked, potentially that's a way for uh, you know, bad guys to get into your network and access other types of information. If you haven't got, for example, VLANs, also segregated uh, networks. Other considerations, also performance. So if you've ever tried uh, if, there's, if this, then that, then you'll probably find out that it took, a time, it took a while before the APIs on the cloud actually talked to each other and did what they were supposed to do. With Home Assistant, when you have that local control, you can actually, devices talk a lot quicker. An example of that is the MQTT 
integration where devices are super fast and they can connect locally without actually needing access to the internet. If you're getting value out of this video, then like this video and subscribe because there's plenty of content like this coming up. The fifth reason to actually consider using Home Assistant, the reason why I use Home Assistant is the community. So the community is really important because when you get stuck, you need to ask someone for help or you need to go on YouTube or you need to Google, you know, to find out a solution. There are plenty of channels on YouTube here that can help a lot of uh, Discord channels, the Home Assistant forums, and also big shout out to the guys on Reddit, the Home Assistant Reddit. Um, let me know if you've actually, uh, you use that. Uh, I found that it's a valuable subreddit, thriving and nearly over 100,000 members. So you can always, always get help from the community. Also, the community actually participates in Home Assistant as it, because it's an, it's an open source software. So you have community people participating through that way, but also through working on the Home Assistant community store. So helping and guiding people along the way. The sixth reason to actually consider using Home Assistant is the software releases cycle. So with many vendors, you sort of buy these products and never get a firmware refresh. There are no new functionality, nothing really happens. Home Assistant, you can see the developers are putting a lot of effort. I think they release every three weeks. They've recently released a big version. Uh, they now renamed the numbers to 2012 uh, and from there onwards, they're getting version 1.0, for example. So they're getting out to a beta stage and actually going into mainstream but they're just adding so many functionality, actually difficult to keep up as a content creator and stay on top of it. So big shout out to all of the developers that actually contribute to Home Assistant. But that for me is a big, big, big signal as being a developer myself of how this platform, if there's any bugs, they'll be sorted out and there's new functionality coming. So, you know, it's a living, it's a live, the software. Staying on topic actually with development and coding is actually the ability to use source control and backups with Home Assistant. Now source control is going to enable you to share your automation files or your configuration files with other people. So you can keep a version online of your configuration in GitHub where you can actually have people collaborate on projects together. And you can also very easily back up your whole system with snapshots and automate that too. So, you know, it is very, very comprehensive. If you never really lose the work you actually put in Home Assistant. If you think you've got a copy of your source control or actually a full snapshot backup, maybe saved in a couple of, uh, maybe on a drive, on a NAS, on your local laptop, wherever. I try to have multiple copies and try to have at least a snapshot a month or, or at least before any major release. Just take a snapshot and that's quite good. So you don't need to worry about this. Last but not least is a mobile phone app, which I use the iOS version of, but I know there's an Android version uh, works really well. And what I really like about this mobile app is the ability to have the same functionality that the desktop UI has, the web browser, for example. This means that you can actually modify your configuration file on mobile or on an iPad which is quite fantastic. It's not that I do that frequently, but you've got that option there. And it's pretty much a scaled down version of the UI. I haven't tried the version for my Mac, but I'm gonna to have to try that very soon. So those are the reasons why actually I use Home Assistant and why you might consider using Home Assistant too. If you wanna get some ideas of types of automations you can actually do with Home Assistant, I'm gonna link a couple of videos here, one video, seven types of automations that you can do with NFC tags, seven ideas to try out maybe during the holiday season. And also another five ideas that you can actually use with presence detections and zones. So I'll see you in those videos and stay safe.